Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Really good session today. Uh, a lot of the names we talked about last night on uh, last night's video. Um, it, just before we get started, and again, for all you guys who are brand new to the channel, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, all that stuff. Again, come, come aboard, uh, take this nightly uh, journey with us. Uh, before we get started, I, you know, we've been, I've been hosting uh, the Access of Trader platform uh, since 2010. So we're going on our 14th year, right? And we've been trading pivots uh, for the last, since 2011. And we've been showing the, demonstrating the power of the pivot for a long time, you know, 12, 13 years now. And I, I, I did a Twitter poll, a poll. I was just curious. And I asked, uh, you know, I asked my followers and I said, I'm just curious for those who have not tried out pivots yet. Okay. Cause I always encourage, uh, new traders always try everything options, futures, small caps, mid caps, large caps, whatever it is, there's 30, 31 flavors, uh, a la Baskin Robbins. You, you just don't know what's going to fit until you try everything. So I, I gave four choices, um, four choices in the feed. And the first one was, uh, account size. Okay. Uh, second choice was just not enough time. You know, life gets in the way. I understand people are uh, working full time. I get that. Uh, the third option was fear of the unknown. And the fourth option was laziness. I was shocked to see that at one point, laziness made up about 25% of all responses. Uh, it got down to about 19% last time I checked. Guys, you're better than that. Uh, forget about pivots, forget about trading, forget about everything else. If you're lazy in this world, you're not going to get a, accomplish anything, okay? Uh, the idea that you are lazy enough to not to put yourself in a position, at least to try to put yourself in a position that you might see something different from a different lens, from a different point of view that could benefit you in your journey is absolutely amazing. I get it, right? Account size, okay, cool. Um, time constraints, I get it. Fear of the unknown, yeah, I get it. You know what? First time I sat behind the wheel when I was 15, 16 years old and drove a car, I was scared crapless, right? Yada, 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 I'm 49. And as much as, as most of us, we can drive a car right now, driving two, three hours, zoning out without even looking on the road. So fear is something that's part of life. But laziness, come on, guys, you're better than that. You can't live life with the notion that if it's not easy, if it's something that doesn't fall into your lap, if it's not something convenient for you, you just don't want to put enough effort. And with this business, with everything else in life, with being a good parent, being a good spouse, being a good entrepreneur, being a good everything, you got to put the work. So the idea that anybody can say on any subject that what's holding them back is laziness has to be a self-reflection moment, guys. There's nothing to even do about pivots. There's nothing to do about you know our platform. It's just self-reflection time. If you can't honestly sit there and you get and you say to yourself after everything is said and done that you gave it all, right? You gave it all, left it all on the field, and you still can't figure out a solution, that's at least you can live with. Laziness, not so much. So let's talk about the market, right? Today we had uh, the CPI. CPI came today. Kind of a non-event, okay, uh, which is a good thing. Non-event is a good thing. Uh, we know, market didn't you know, pretty much react to it. Went down a little bit, went up a little bit. Nothing really crazy. Uh, all in all, the queues kind of maintained uh, the 50-day moving average held 72, the light, light, uh, the area we talked about last night in the video, continue to hold 72 and continue to build above the 50-day moving average. The problem is it's still putting in three days worth of lower highs and lower lows. But again, from glass half full, you're still putting in all these highs and all these lower highs and lower lows above the 50-day moving average. Obviously, 72 uh, continues to be the very, very important area. Uh, on the queues, any close below 372, again, will start getting prices lower. 
uh, any uh, and any close on the keys from the macro side above 377.63 will start the next move up. So that that's our levels, right? 377.63 to the upside, uh, 372 to the downside. Everything else is uh, process dependent, uh, individual approach dependent, and it's obviously something uh, that uh, every trader uh, needs to uh, address. So tomorrow we have the PPI, right? CPI followed by the PPI. Uh, all these data points, right? All this data that is telling us absolutely nothing. Uh, yet inflation is still here, right? I could be the first one to tell you, if you in case you haven't figured it out yet, uh, inflation is still here. So again, we're kind of in the same scenario for tomorrow. Let's see which way we break, right? Like I said, going into uh, today on last night's video, it's not that I was sell buys going into last into today's session from last night's videos. I just couldn't find any setups to the upside. And the one stock I kept on talking about in case the market does rally was da, 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 Amazon. Again, if you've been watching this broadcast uh, just in the last couple of days, you know this was the cleanest setup in the whole technology space. It finally broke out today and it is up uh, $4 and change. Uh, on the day, it's up another about 75, 80 cents after the close. Um, I got about 25% left from today's breakout. If I can, if we could get a push today over 146 after hours, I'll be more than happy to sell it. Uh, again, just one of those scenarios ahead of the PPI bird in the hand, but if not, I have no problem taking the last 25% uh, overnight. Uh, but we talked about a lot of really good setups uh, to the downside yesterday. Uh, we saw them, right? We saw them play out. And one of the things we keep on reiterating the point, earnings lows, earnings lows, earnings lows, earnings low plays uh, for years and years and years I've been doing them. And that is the highest probability of success on multi-day uh, swing trades to the downside that you're going to find. Uh, most of them are very slow. Most of them are very methodic. They're not boring, but hell, they work really, really well. So for example, uh, I came in short Nike, like we talked about in last night's video. Um, I came in short Nike. Uh, it went down about, about 70 cents at the open. And it just, you know, Nike for some reason trades very, very sporadic. So I covered some and I just didn't, didn't like the way it was trading. The future started uh, going lower and, the, and Nike started rallying. I was like, you know what? Let me take the stock off. So I took that off. But again, whatever it is, let your worst trade be a good one. You know, and then we started talking about stocks like HLIT. Again, here's another perfect example. We talked about it last night's video, right? This is the lowest close in this whole formation. Took out the earnings lows. The stock went down pretty decent amount, right? Went down to the 950s area. Um, I still have two thirds of my position here. I think it goes lower. I think there's a shot of this thing uh, test nine dollars. A trade that we started today, IPG again, right? What's the theme? Da 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 da. It took out earnings lows. Beautiful move. Absolutely beautiful move on IPG. We talked about HTZ last night, right? HTZ uh, on the video. Uh, again, this is the lowest close in this whole formation. Um, I started shorting it basically where the where the where the, where the closing price was, somewhere around fifteen sixty four, close to fifteen sixty two. But watch this thing for tomorrow, right? If if HTZ starts building below today's channel here, this thing could really get get low. I mean, these trades are controllable. They're slow, and whether you're a really aggressive trader or whether you're a new trader just starting to figure out price action, it'll give you all the time in the world to kind of manifest the price action or organically let your brain. Uh, sink into the price action so it's not scary. It's it, There is no fear. Your heart's not palpitating. That's what the whole mega cap place is for. I'm just joking around. Mega caps uh, or the beta names as I call them, uh, they're very, very orderly. They're just not for everybody, but they're very, very orderly. So these are the moves that are really, you know, really uh, organic. I mean, look at another one, PDCO, right? PDCO. Again, look at it broke, broke down today, right? 28.60, stock went down to 28 bucks. Again, they're not sexy, they're not, you know, they're not, you know, social media worthy, but they're very, very effective and they're organically selling. Because keep this in mind, guys, once a stock loses its earnings low, there is no catalyst, right? Think about it. They already blew up on earnings. They attempted a dead cat balance. That dead cat balance failed. They closed below uh, their earnings lows. There's nothing, there's nothing for the stock to weigh itself on short term. And this is why you're getting the two, three, four uh, day continue moves. Um, one stock that can continues to, to get hit was Apple uh, yesterday's event uh, on the iPhone event, the iCharger event, blah, 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 blah. Stock continues to get sold here. And now it's getting very, very close to the bottom of the range. Netflix, right? Netflix CEO, uh, CFO today uh, came out with comments. Um, you know, let me read the comments to you. I'm not, you know, I, I don't pretend to know everything. So 
the CFO is talking about the spinoff from accounts from revised sharing policy are being skewed. They talked about potentially, uh, you know, trying to extend their hand in the online video game space, which so far is not playing out. Uh, they don't see a big revenue stream for live sports. We kind of got that. We kind of knew that uh, a long time ago. And Bank of America came out with cautious comments intraday. And you can see here, the, uh, uh, Netflix just got absolutely skewed. Uh, they're talking about 90% of their revenue or at least ad revenue is coming out uh, from outside of the United States, which is, is not a good uh, rate return for uh, average consumer or price to click consumer. So Netflix got absolutely destroyed here. So we're still in this one of those scenarios uh, that we're still in a scenario of let's wait and see, right? As long as the queues continue to build uh, above the 50-day moving average, you could buy stocks. You could definitely buy stocks. Because as you can see, and we see here every single day, there's still a lot of value to the downside. And as we say all, every day, all day, we are prepared on both sides. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Again, some good stuff, man. Really, really good good day today. I mean, very good day today. We had Tesla, we had Amazon, we had the slower mover names. Some names didn't confirm, but all in all, very effective day. So yesterday, you know, yesterday was the pivot, HLIT, 984. If it builds below, it can flush, multi-day move. It closed yesterday in 992. Uh, today, you know, it needs to confirm that below 977. Uh, HLIT, you know, is, is closed at the lows of the day. Again, not sexy, right? But closed at the lows of the day at 959. This thing looks lower. Again, almost a 40 cent move on HLIT so far. Again, it's not sexy, but it's very, very effective. Uh, Nike, right? So I came in short Nike, like I said before, if it loses 96, 15, 96, uh, you know, it traded down to like 95, 60s. It just, again, I covered like half down like 70 cents. The rest, I just kicked it out when it was about to go green. I just didn't want to anything to do with it. Uh, guys, Ambo, okay, I'm sharing this price with you guys. Usually I don't share the earnings prices with, uh, you know, for the online video. But I'm sharing this price. Guys, set an alert on Amber, right? It's another earnings low play, right? Look at the chart on Amberella, okay? Amberella, here's the chart, right? Set an alert on Amberella. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you guys the price here. Set, set an alert. Any close on Amberella below 57.20, this thing's going to start a multi-day move, right? You have measured potentially your 55. Does it have to confirm tomorrow? Does it have to confirm the next day? It doesn't have to confirm. But, the, but set an alert, right? Set an alert. I'm trying to help out. Uh, you know, social media nation here. For all you guys who are, again, curious about pivots, all that good stuff. Again, all you need to do is try them for 30 days. I promise you, you will never look at the market uh, the same way again. But watch this thing in uh, the next couple of days, 57.20. If it starts building below, you know, again, this thing can really uh, get hit. So keep an eye on Umbrella. It still hasn't confirmed. Uh, AMD never got to 103. Uh, HTZ, again, I just started to position this thing uh, basically where it closed, 1564. Uh, it still hasn't done anything. Went down like 10, 15 cents, but really hasn't done anything yet. Tesla, really nice move on Tesla. There was a sneaky pivot on Tesla. Uh, for those that don't have a position, we do. We've been swinging this thing from 266. I still think there's a shot. Uh, it could get to uh, 280 by Friday. Uh, 271, 20 rejected uh, twice on the 60 minute. Needs to build. Nice push on Tesla. Again, night, every single trade needs, needs to be uh, amazing. Here's the two. Here's the sneaky pivot right here. Uh, 271.20, 271.20 traded right to supply of 275. Let's see if this thing can. Uh, let's see if this thing can propel higher tomorrow. Uh, Nvidia, cute little move here. 56.73 needs to build. Not a big move, but uh, went up about a couple of bucks. Here is Nvidia. Uh, here is Nvidia. Took out the 56. Uh, 56.70s traded up to 59 and change. Uh, not a big move there. Uh, IPG, right? I still have uh, half size. I still have half size in IPG. 3138. Again, you see the theme? Earnings low. Any close below because starts the next leg down. Here's IPG, right? Here's IPG. Traded all the way down to 3040s. I'm still sitting in half. I want to see this thing get lower. Again, another, right? See the theme? Earnings lows, guys. You could you could have a really good, strong career trading just earnings low. I'm telling you, once once it blows up on earnings and confirms the earnings low, there's no reason to buy stock. Uh, PDCO, uh, 2860 earnings low, if it builds below, can flush. Here was uh, PDCO, right? It took out 2860, traded all the way down to 2790. This thing looks like it wants to see 27 in the next couple of days. 
And here is the big trade, right? Here is definitely the big trade. I'm still holding 25% of my position. Uh, 143, 60, 63 rejected twice. We talked about uh, we talked about Amazon two out of the three last videos about the TAC earnings highs. Uh, needs to confirm and yada, yada, yada. Here we are. Amazon broke out today, uh, closed at 45 at the high of the day, and now is trading about 70 cents higher uh, after the close. So really good today, really good solid day. Again, guys, for all you guys who are brand new and you're still struggling and you're still trying to figure out what your place is in this, in this business, whether you're a day trader, swing trader, whatever the case may be, again, I encourage you, try everything. Mid caps, small caps, options, futures, whatever it is, try the pivots. I'm telling you, try the pivots. Nobody on the planet trades it but us. I, again, there's a, you know, there's a little faction of social media who's trying to trade the PS60 theory. It's not quite it, right? Not quite it. Again, if you have a chance to learn the PS60 theory from the originator, the person who created versus a third, fourth tier party, it's probably wise to do so. Guys, have a great night, everybody. Just a reminder, uh, tomorrow night is Thursday. There is no video. It's my nightly day off, my regular Thursday night off. Tomorrow, PPI. We'll see where the direction builds. But the most important thing is, guys, stay prepared on both sides. God bless everybody. I'll see you guys tomorrow.